Now with a climate emergency upon us, we're going to debate nuclear energy in Ireland and joining me here in studio is Saif O'Neill, Assistant Professor at the School of Law and Government at DCU and Sarah Cullen, Director at 18 for Zero. You're both very welcome along to the programme. Um, and I want you both, because you've come from opposing sides of this debate around nuclear energy, um, but maybe you can just set out your stall and, and tell us why you feel so strongly one way or the other on it. Um, Sarah, from your point of view, that campaign 18 for Zero is really pushing for for nuclear energy here in Ireland and for it to be considered at least. Why is that? Yeah, so we're not pushing for nuclear energy in Ireland. We're pushing for the Irish government to consider all of the technology options that are available to reach net zero emissions in our electricity sector by 2050. At the moment, they're not doing that. At the moment, um, there is a target of reaching net zero emissions, but there are currently no pathways. Airgrid are drawing up pathways that are going to come out in the third quarter of next year. And then in 2024, the Irish government's going to come out with a roadmap. We need to make sure that all technology options are included, um, especially clean ones. The UNECE, so the UN Economic Commission for Europe, this year came out with a study comparing the carbon emissions of all major forms of electricity generation. Nuclear power had the lowest, lower than renewables. It's a good option. Okay, it's a good option, um, says Sarah. Sive, your views on this. Um, to date, it hasn't been considered for here in Ireland. Um, why, why not, do you think, and why do you think it's not a good idea? Well, there has been a long-standing tradition in Ireland of opposition to nuclear energy. Uh, there was a lot of campaigns in the 80s and 90s against the expansion at Sellafield and other power plants in the UK. So the uh, environmental movement essentially grew out of an anti-nuclear movement. Um, but I think the debate has moved on and there are a lot of us environmentalists like myself who are not in principle opposed to nuclear power. The technology um, is low carbon and has been designated as such. The, the, the issue I have with nuclear power is scaling it up in time for it to be a realistic solution to the climate crisis because the UN has told us that we need to be uh, you know completely net zero by 2050 and that developed countries should achieve that by 2040 and we just can't build the nuclear installations in time to uh, for them to play a meaningful role in that. Sarah it's the argument we consistently hear from those mm. who are opposed to nuclear I don't think it's the right option for Ireland that all of this infrastructure takes far too long to build. Yeah, it's completely untrue. And um, so also the UN says that without nuclear power, climate objectives will not be reached. That was also in the UNECE report that came out this year. Um, under the International Energy Agency's roadmaps to net zero by 2050, we have to at least double the international nuclear mm. capacity in the world. Under the IPCC's 2018 um, 1.5 mm. degree landmark report, um, in the median scenario, we had to increase nuclear by sixfold. Every country in the world world that has plans to decarbonize their electricity ha is relying either on hydro or nuclear to support their renewables or a combination of the boat of the two. Uh, Ireland has very limited capacity for hydro. We have to consider nuclear. That's okay. what everyone else now, is doing. Just to, just to bring up, people will think of nuclear and whether you like it or not, they're going to start thinking about Sellafield, um, you know, just over the sea. They're going to think about Chernobyl and the huge legacy issues that are associated with nuclear power. Um, that is still an issue when it comes to consideration and considering them for locations here in Ireland. There will be great opposition to it. There will be opposition, but no matter what technologies we decide to build to get to net zero, we're going to have to have massive infrastructure changes that I can guarantee people will not be happy with. We may as well at this point choose the best technologies to get their cheapest and the most reliable and most environmentally er, sustainable way. Okay. And it's doing a disservice to Irish people to just completely discount technologies based on kind of a gut feeling that they don't like them. All right. When you were saying the technologies are newer, would you say the technology Technologies now, would you acknowledge that the technologies now are, are safe and the risks when we talk about the Sellafields, when we talk about Chernobyl's, aren't there with all this new technology side? Well, um, there's a few different things. There's different kinds of risks and the risks may be lower associated with modern nuclear plants, but they still exist. And the risks entailed in some kind of nuclear accident um, are potentially catastrophic. Now, the nuclear industry has uh, reduced the chances of that with um, ever since Fukushima 
Fukushima and mm -hmm. Chernobyl, you know, there have been many improvements, but it doesn't uh, entirely eliminate the risk and that increases the cost. So one of the things we have to remember is that in Ireland, the cheapest form of electricity uh, that is not based on fossil fuels is onshore wind and offshore wind and solar. So it, in, in terms of cost, it makes sense to go with the low hanging fruit. It makes sense to go with rolling out infrastructure that we have the capacity to deliver. And even doing that is going to be very challenging. We have a commitment, for example, of five gigawatts of offshore wind by 2030. And experts are saying that that might be very difficult to achieve. And yeah. if we can't even build a children's hospital, an incinerator, and the cross city Lewis you know, in less than 10 years, how are we going to roll out nuclear power in a meaningful time scale? Because it's what we do in the near term that really makes a difference to the climate. Sarah, we're not great on time frames in this country. As you know, when there's a plan, it won't be done when, for the most part, when they say it be done. Someone has tweeted in to say, imagine asking our government to regulate nuclear and they can't regulate housing. It's, it's a huge proposition, isn't it? If I Ireland was going to build nuclear power, we would have to follow the International Atomic Energy Agency milestone approach to doing that. That takes between 10 and 15 years, which is short on the time scale of energy systems. And what about the cost? Also, I have to point out, this, uh, yeah, about the cost. Um, it's not accurate to say that wind is the cheapest form of electricity generation. A system entirely based on wind would be astronomically expensive. The OECD came out with a report, I think last year, that showed that system costs escalate dramatically the more variable renewables you have in a system with up to 75%, which is lower than the target our mm -hmm. government has for 2030, it doubles the cost of electricity just from system costs alone. Yeah, I mean, there are all those other, um, you know, energy sources that we can be looking at, but should we be more ambitious around this side and should we look long term? Yes, we need a steady energy supply today, but we also need it in decades to come. Absolutely. I mean, I think that, you know, when it comes to the climate crisis, the penny still has not dropped. We are facing a climate emergency and we need to decarbonise our energy systems rapidly, much more quickly than is comfortable, to be honest. We're going to be uh, looking at making emission reductions in the order of 7% per annum here in Ireland and we're nowhere near getting that in place yet. So the challenge is enormous. And I, for one, don't think we should, in principle, rule out any technology that can play a role. But we have to consider that if we uh, open the door to nuclear in this way. The, 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 if we take a cavalier approach to risk and large scale complex technologies, we're also opening the door to geoengineering options to fix the climate. Yeah. And, you know, I, I think we, we, we have to go with the most ecologically sustainable solutions right. to our energy needs, and they're already there. Sarah, to come in on that and, and, the, and, and risk, when you talk about radioactive waste, like the US isn't arguably able to handle that as yet. So there are, are there issues true. around that? Um, and nuclear waste is incredibly well managed. There has never been a major environmental release of stored nuclear waste from nuclear power plants. What most people think of as hazardous nuclear waste is usually legacy military waste. I don't know why you think we would take a cavalier approach to risk. We wouldn't be able Able to do that. Ireland is a member of the International Atomic Energy Agency. We would have to follow their protocols for looking into building nuclear. We'd have to follow the highest standards. And currently, Ireland does regulate nuclear materials under the EPA. And we've been commended greatly by the IAEA for how well we do that. Ireland has a really good safety standard for this. I, I don't think that Ireland's too incompetent or too cavalier with safety to yeah, be able to build nuclear power. We're talking about a sort of societal socio-technical transition to zero carbon energy. And if we're going to bring in new technologies that do inherently present risks, complexity, uh, large-scale um, changes in everything about how our energy system is constructed. That opens the door to considering other types of interferences with the climate system on, on, a, on a moral hazard basis. I think we should be extremely careful about that. Um, so we have Would to look at each... Would generally be opposed to nuclear energy? Climate I, activists I think, aren't. I think that... It's the lowest carbon form of electricity generation. I think that environmentalists want a safe atmosphere and that means reducing our emissions by at least 50% okay. by 2030. And if somebody can show me a way okay. of doing that with nuclear, I'll be forced. We have it in our report. Okay, we'll have to leave it there.